about 40 million people in the world are blind, and another 250 million have some form of visual impairment. And these numbers are on the rise in the rapidly aging populations in the UK and in Europe and in many other countries. My primary scientific interest is trying to understand how we sense and make sense of the world. And the way I do that is through studying blind people. And through the study of blind people, getting insights into how our other senses are able to pick up information about the world. My research interests are trying to, at a very basic level, understand how becoming blind affects the way you perceive the world and think about the world. But then also to try and work with computer scientists and engineers to develop new technological solutions that would allow those individuals to interact with sighted people and interact with the sighted world in a way that lessens any of the problems that can arise from being blind. We are examining how blindness impacts the way we sense the world by carrying out psychological studies that compare sighted individuals, congenitally blind individuals, and late blind individuals on a number of very fundamental cognitive tasks. So what we found so far are some fundamental differences in terms of how the congenitally blind perceive and represent the world versus those who have had visual experience. One example is in terms of spatial cognition, how we remember where objects are. We carried out an experiment where we brought in sighted individuals and blind individuals and we blindfolded the sighted individuals and had them walk around the room learning the locations of objects. And then later on we would test them by asking them to recall the object locations. And what we found is that sighted individuals build up a survey or sort of map-like representation of where the objects are in relation to each other. What's interesting is that congenitally blind individuals instead learn the relationship of the objects to the starting point that they took. So instead of having a map-like view, they have sort of a view centered on where they began. And the most interesting thing is looking at the late blind. And they, in fact, perform the same as the sighted individuals. So having just a little bit of visual experience early in life leads one to build up sort of this map-like view, this map-like structure of where things are. In this EPSRC-funded project, we are working with computer scientists to at first, just understand sort of the basic psychology of blindness. Uh, understand how blind people might be able to use their remaining intact senses to receive information that they would otherwise be receiving through vision. And the way we're going to go about this is to carry out a series of experiments to see how we can take visual information and represent it in sound or represent it in touch. And then my colleagues in computer science at Queen Mary will take these fundamental psychological findings and develop new computer software applications to allow blind people to carry out normal tasks like they would at work or in sport. And then once they develop this new technology, it will come back to my lab here at the University of Bath where we'll test the functionality and the usability of this technology to see how well it actually has an impact on the ability of blind people to collaborate with sighted people. So what's most exciting about this project really is the fact that it's bringing together psychology and engineering in new ways. And we really hope that this will not only influence our individual fields of psychology and computer science, but ultimately allow for a true bright future for those individuals who are becoming visually impaired and really give them a chance to feel they have a full interactive place with the visual world.